50. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter, Master, uh, uh, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under featured content. It's going to say you're going to see the opening call, subscribe a webinar. Well, we're going to bring that down. But if you just hit that, what you're going to be able to do. Yes, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to hit subscribe and you're going to get two different things. You're going to get the newsletter. It's only $149 for a month. For six months, it's $695, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you get a full year for $1,195, which is a savings of $592, or 33%. And what you will also get here, okay, you're going to get a great newsletter, but you're also going to get the webinars that Basil has done because they're all laid out right on the page. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, okay? So as you subscribe, if it works for you, awesome. You get the great newsletter. You get all the archives. If it doesn't work for you for some reason, just give us a, an email, 28th, 29th day. You get your money back, and you still have got a great newsletter, plus the archive, so you understand how Basil looks at the market each and every day. Happy New Year, Basil. And a very happy New Year to huh. you, Tom, and to the whole TFNN uh, yeah. staff and all our hosts, and certainly to our listeners. May it be a really healthy and rewarding 2024. That's a fact. Amen. I like yes. that, man. I like that. So, where do you want to start? So, I thought I'd just review a little bit of what I was looking at the last few days of uh, the month, of last month, okay. 2023. And what I was saying is that every single thing that I look at, all the charts on the daily, not the weekly, then I'll talk about that in a moment, but the daily charts all look to me like they overextended based on at least two of my many indicators. And those indicators have worked really well for me. So I said that we've got to become a little careful. We are long, but on Friday, we started uh, two short positions. One was in the Dow, even though I, the signal that I had wasn't exactly like the one in August the 1st. I had an on balance volume reversal plus the DOG gave me, a, that's the one to one short, gave me a signal to say, hey, this should be coming, the, the, the Dow should turn right here and it should be very strong to the downside. This has some of the characteristics, so let me go through them. So in the Dow, the daily chart, still strong. I just wanted to show this for a moment because in the Chapman Wave, we're looking for the lowest low bar count each successively higher peak. I'm anticipating that a buy signal goes to a buy mode, meaning it's upgraded and it should go to at least four higher peaks. I alphabetize them sequentially. A, the next peak is B, then C, then D, but... It's a D that other things can happen. So it's your, it's the, the chart's obligation. Once it's in a buy mode, to go to at least a D, the fourth highest peak, it can do other things. Now, one of the things I spoke about, and I think it was last week you spoke to me, you said, what, tell me about that instant restart at D. And I said to you, it happens in very strong markets where there's a very strong move to the upside. We get to that fourth highest peak. And then instead of just breaking down what happens within three bars, it goes to a higher high. And right at that time, I have an alternate count that says the next peak is E, but it could also be an A, a brand new buy signal. So the instant restart is the only time that almost immediately you can get a signal that says it's so powerful that it can go to another four higher peaks. Well, it went to E, which is E slash A. Then it went to F, which gave that big, strong red candle. Remember, that was at Wednesday. Yes. We'd actually gone short the uh, the SMHs via the SOXS, and we got a really nice single-day pullback, and then we covered everything. And then the the market continued higher. So what happened is last week we made a G slash C. In other words, we got to the uh, sixth highest peak. There's never, there's never an H. So at that point, you have to think, well, what's going on? Am I... Over the last year and a half, particularly the last six months, there have been so many peak Gs that had what I call a G slash C, an alternate account that said, don't get, don't get too sure about things right now because there could be a little bit of a pullback and then a momentary punch to a slightly higher high, which gives you D, and then you've got to be careful. So as I say, we, we are short. The, we, we've been long the Dow from um, March of 2020. Uh, long from the October low, we've got both the diamonds and the uh, three times long. 
But at the same time, on a very short-term basis, I said, you know, I just everything I'm looking at suggests that we've got a, some kind of a turnaround. So we are short the Dow. But look at this weekly candle. So there's a kind of a dichotomy here between short-term, many, many of the charts are showing really serious signs of being overbought, meaning they should digest. It doesn't mean they have to collapse, just a digestive sideways to down move. But those weekly charts are really strong. So until this closing Friday, I need the full week to look at it. It's made a new higher high. That means both the uh, weekly and the daily, sorry, the weekly and the monthly. You remember I was speaking to you and I was saying, if all of January there is no new higher high, even by one penny above the December high, then we've made a peak. But if there is a move that goes even just one penny above December's high, We've extended this leg C. That means you can't get to peak C until all of February. You can't get a leg D until March. And you can't get um, a peak D until April. So that's very bullish. Which on the I think we did chart. this morning, didn't we? Do, I think we And what did we do this morning? We went to a higher high. Right, yes. right. Okay. Yes, it's, a, it's a technique that took me right. years to develop. And I, 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 could, I could never believe that it was that it gave these kind of readings. Anyway, so now we're short, but this is just the start. I just, we've got to be a little careful here because the, there's this, the Dow is really the Dow 30. It's, it's really not an industrial anymore. So it, it's got a mix. So that's a little different. And you can even see in the XLF today, the final, we are still along, where did that go? Uh, Bank of America, uh, that, that sector, and it's very important that this sector, that the financials, Holds quite well. You can see, look, the financials are holding nicely. The XLF is yeah. actually up five cents. But this is the issue. As you and I have discussed for forever, that where the semis go, the general market tends to follow. And I did all my homework on the semiconductors, and I said, okay, um, Friday we went short, but we went short via going along the SOXS. That's an, an ETF that is a short ETF, but you buy it, and if you don't think you don't have to go short or anything like that, it goes short for you. So yes. you buy it, and if it moves up, that means the market's going down. So we've got uh, the SOXS. Uh, we got it the day after the high. And one of the things I, I used, um, this is just one of the many techniques that I use, but this one to me is really important. And you can see, um, here's the Dow. This is the on-balance volume. Here is the high that was made. August the 1st, where we went short. And you can see, look, it went exactly, you know, we've got algorithms, you've got all sorts of things, you've got every single technique in the book. And the most simplest thing of all I found is on balance volume. That's Joe Granville's on balance volume. It's a running total of prices. If it closes, if the bar closes up, you add it to the running total. If it closes down, you, you, you uh, subtract it. So here we've made a top. So the SMHs, gave us a signal just as the Dow did, and look how sharply they've turned down. So we've got about a 16% gain so far on the SOXS, but we'll see what happens. But this is the signal that gave it to us. And folks, it's very easy to get this newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're gonna see it right under the featured content where it just says Basil Chapman. Just hit that button. Basil, have a great one, safe one. We look forward to show tomorrow. Thank you very much, Tom. Stay have right there, folks. Come right back.